guys, this is Dana, and this is video number 44 in the Red Flags of a Narcissist series. Video 44 is red flag number 44, which is huge hypocrite. <laughs> so what do I mean by this? Well, a hypocrite is somebody that has the attitude of, you know, do as I say, don't do as I do. So there's this double standard as far as behavior goes. And generally, it's their double standard is that they expect you to live a life of openness, honesty, loyalty, and respect for them, but it's not delivered back to you. So they're going to be lying, cheating, stealing, manipulating, kind of doing whatever they're going to do, but they are horrified and outraged if you're even acting remotely close to how they're acting. So why? Why do they do this? Well, narcissistic people have, they're selfish and they have this attitude of entitlement that they just are entitled to act in whatever way that they want to act and that they're, they should be able to do whatever they want to do with whomever they want to do it with as much as they want to do it and that the world just needs to be okay with it. That's what makes their behavior so problematic. It's because there's no true accountability on their behalf for what they're doing. And there's no, because there's no accountability of that what they're doing is wrong, there's no remorse and there's no real desire to change. So here's some examples of this hypocrisy in motion. There's four examples. First one, I had an employee once who talked all about how honest he was and how his word was his bond and how everything should be done just on a handshake. But he wouldn't give me his social security number or his mailing address. It was just so weird. I let this slide for the first couple of weeks because he kept promising to get it to me, but he never did. I didn't like how one-sided our relationship was, and so I ended up having to fire him. I just couldn't shake the feeling that I was somehow going to get screwed over. Okay, example number two. I caught my husband having two different affairs in the past four years. He's refused to give me any type of answers about any of it. He still hides his phone and gets upset if I ask him where he was or why he's coming home late. But he he thinks that I have trust issues and that I'm being paranoid and doesn't feel that he owes me any answers whatsoever. But however, he wants to know where I am all the time and he always accuses me of cheating on him. Example number three. My girlfriend was cheating on me and I got so upset I went out one night and cheated on her just to make her upset and settle the score. Now I'm not allowed to bring up her cheating as according to her, that's me living in the past, but she brings up my cheating all the time. Example number four, I loaned my narcissistic mother $10,000. She told me that family helps each other out and boy, I fell for it. She promised to pay me back and, and to this day hasn't. It's been over three years now. My daughter the other day asked her for gas money and my mother had the nerve to actually tell my daughter that she was irresponsible and that she needed to figure out a way to pay for her own gas. Okay, so those are some examples of hypocrisy in motion. And so a healthy relationship, so here's kind of the difference between a healthy relationship and a narcissistic relationship. A healthy relationship is based on both people having the same expectations of behavior. So basically, openness, honesty, and respect. And so if those three elements aren't there, then there is no relationship. There's a manipulation ship, but there's no relationship. And where I think a lot of people get hung up, and I've been there too, is we tend to think, we tend to cling to the hope that this person could change, that their behavior could change. And so we might be telling ourselves, okay, but they could change. But then that's not what's really going on. But well, but they could possibly change, right? Well, but they're not. Okay, but they could, but they're not. <laughs> and so it's kind of this going back and forth. And of course, this, a lot of this bad behavior tends to to continue to get worse and worse with time. And so what happens for the victims is this level of, um, you know, resentment and anger starts building up and building up and building up. And because they can't talk to their partner about their feelings because they don't have this openness, honesty, or respect. It's not a two-way street. Their partner doesn't want to hear about what issues they have with their, with their behavior. So the, the victim ends up kind of just stuffing this deep down inside. Well, of course, the problem with doing this is 
it, it doesn't go away. So it starts, those feelings start kind of coming up in different areas of our life. So maybe we start, um, you know, eating a lot or we gain a lot of weight or we lose a lot of weight or we start drinking or we start using drugs or we're starting to spend money on, you know, things we don't need. We're, we're spending too much money. We're, we're doing some sort of, you know, coping, we're developing some sort of like maladaptive coping method in order to stay in this manipulationship because we don't want to leave. And so this is really, you know, if you, if this is kind of where you are, this is very problematic and it's worth looking inwards to yourself and trying to figure out, okay, why am I still here? Kind of what's still in this for me? And more importantly, what would it take for me to actually leave this relationship? Kind of where is my line in the sand? And with these manipulationships, and here's kind of the other thing that throws a lot of people off. So in healthy relationships, there's that promise and that expectation of openness, honesty, and respect. In a manipulationship, there's they tend to dangle that in front of the victim. So there's these promises that yes, yes, given enough time or love or rehab or therapy or what have you, that yes, openness, honesty, respect, you can have that too. Just hang in there a little longer. Just we'll just get through this. And so then the victim, you know, keeps kind of scrambling towards those false promises of of hope and change. And so if this is kind of where you are at, I would encourage you to ask yourself. How much time, how much more time are you willing to invest in this relationship or money for therapy or rehab or kind of what have you? Kind of where is your line in the sand? And then go from there. So that's what I have for you today. I'll be really curious to see kind of what you guys think about this red flag and we'll continue this conversation down below in the comments. So take care. Lots of love to you guys. You're not alone. You're not crazy and you really can heal from this. So take care. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.